So, we have discussed about four different engines and their efficiencies Carnot engine, Starling engine, then uh, gasoline engine and diesel engine out of which two engines are external combustion engines which are like um, Starling engine and uh, no Starling engine is the only one that we have discussed and uh, actually Carnot engine is not even a real one. So, it is an hypothetical one and gasoline engine and diesel engines are the internal combustion engines we have uh, discussed about the efficiencies of those. However, there can be many other possible engines or possible uh, thumb, you know cycle thermodynamic cycles that we can construct and calculate their efficiencies. But the important thing is that uh, the Carnot engine which is a hypothetical one we can show that that no heat engine operating between two given thermal reservoirs reservoirs means basically having a fixed temperature can be more efficient than the Carnot engine operating between the same two reservoirs. So, that means, if an engine runs between two fixed temperature reservoirs, then the efficiency of any of those engines cannot be more than the Carnot engine. So, that is what we are going to discuss today. So, let us take about, so you know that all real engines are irreversible engines right. So, let us take an example of an irreversible engine and an example of a Carnot engine. So, typically the way we construct the process is that we have a high temperature reservoir from which a heat Q H is taken. Let us say it is Q H prime and a Q L prime is ejected to the low temperature reservoir. So, this is an irreversible engine and therefore, I put I as the indicator of that and let us say the work output of this particular engine is W. So, the efficiency of this engine eta i will be 1 minus q l prime by q h prime. As I said uh, in all these cases we are just taking the modulus rather than the sign. So, it will automatically come to be that. Let us take a Carnot engine within the same temperature difference. and let us call it E we, which we have been defining as E. Here also a different amount of heat is taken in let us say same work output is given in and a different amount of heat is ejected out. So, efficiency of this particular engine E which is a Carnot engine is 1 minus Q L by Q H. Now, let us say for the argument sake that efficiency of the irreversible engine is greater than that of E say. So, in that case what it means is that 1 minus Q L prime by Q H prime is greater than 1 minus Q L by Q H. So, or to write in a different way we can say that the efficiency of this engine uh, irreversible engine is the work output by the heat input Q H prime. Let us say it is greater than that of the Carnot engine. So, automatically we can see. So, remember that uh, we have adjusted the heat input and output in such a way that the work is same. Okay. So, we can always do that. We have kept the work same, but efficiency is different. So, now efficiency have written in a simpler form W is the work output which is of course, Q H prime minus Q L prime and the heat inputs are different. Now, once I put it like that you can clearly see that here the Q H prime is since it is greater Q H prime should be smaller than Q H if the efficiency of the irreversible engine is higher than that of the Carnot engine. Okay. Now, let us see that if that is the case what is going to happen. Now, let us combine the irreversible engine and Carnot engine in such a way that the irreversible engine should drive the Carnot engine. That means, the work that we are going to get out of this irreversible engine should be uh, helping the opposite of the engine. Okay. So, we are going to put this particular engine in reverse 
and this is in the forward direction. Now, let us do that. So, again T h going to take Q h prime heat is going to produce W amount of work and going to throw away Q l amount of heat to the low temperature reservoir. This W amount of work now is going to go into the Carnot engine which is kept in reverse. So, call it R. Now, exactly opposite of this thing will happen here which means that Q h will go back to the high temperature and Q l is going to be taken in from the low temperature just the opposite when you when you put. So, whenever you want to put an engine in reverse first construct the engine and then just reverse it. So, exactly the signs will be reversed. So, here like Q h is positive W will be negative and then Q l is negative here Q l is positive W is positive and Q h is negative ok. The arrows also indicate. So, now now see none of this is till now violating any of the laws because the heat is transferred from low temperature to high temperature with the help of the work. Okay, so, I have maintained the efficiencies of this engine and efficiencies of this engine everything is maintained. Now, the combined system is such that coming out as that So, Q l prime is getting thrown away and Q l is taken in. So, Q l minus Q l prime heat is taken in from the low temperature and without be work being done Q h minus Q h prime is thrown in right. Now, we know that from this construction of the engine we know that Q h prime minus Q l prime is equal to W. We know from this engine is that Q h minus Q l is W equating them together we get we get Q h min, uh, Q h prime minus Q l prime is equal to Q h minus Q l and therefore, Q h minus Q h prime is equal to Q l minus Q l prime. So, which means that I can call it Q and this also will be Q they are equal which means that the heat is taken in from low temperature reservoir and thrown into the high temperature. See sign is very important because if it turns out that heat is flowing from high temperature to low temperature reservoir then there is no violation of the second law of thermodynamics. So, it is important that this is a positive quantity that is taken in from the low temperature and this is a negative quantity that is thrown into the high temperature and that is what is happening because we know that bec uh, the way we have done this that this is a positive quantity right because we have seen that Q h you look at this one now. So, Q h is larger than Q h prime. So, therefore, a positive amount of heat is thrown into the high temperature reservoir. So, now this is in violation of Clausius second law theorem right. Clausius statement of so, this is a violation of Clausius statement of second law ok. So, which means that our initial argument that a re irreversible engine can be higher than a reversible engine cannot be true because it would have if it were true then it would have violated the second law of thermodynamics. So, that means no irreversible engine can have higher efficiency than a, a reversible Carnot engine. Now, question is that can one reversible engine be better than other reversible engine? Now, we are going to say that. So, corollary to this earlier argument is that all reversible engines working between two temperature reservoirs have the same efficiency. Now, how do we arrive at that? So, remember our construction was like this that we have a high temperature reservoir from which an engine was taking in heat and throwing away heat. And with that we have added an engine in reverse which took the heat from low temperature and threw into the 
high temperature. Okay. Now, we said that let us say in this particular case now, we have both of them as reversible engine. Let us call it R 1 and let us call it R 2. Of course, R 2 is added in the opposite direction. Okay. So, so, here R 1 is driving R 2 just like the, the way we have constructed it before. Now, following the same argument, we can show that that eta r 1. So, we have what we have gathered from last uh, example that eta i cannot be cannot be greater than the reversible one, which means it will be either less or equal to the reversible one, the one on the right hand side. Similarly, following the same argument, if we put it that way, we can show that that eta r 1 cannot be greater than the R 2 for the same reason that an, uh, an irreversible engine was not being able to drive that. So, it cannot R 1 cannot be greater than R 2. Now, let us switch the places of R 1 and R 2. So, this left hand side becomes R 2 which will drive now R 1 and we can because there is R 1 and R 2 arbitrary eta R 2 cannot be greater than eta R 1. Now, you see when you combine both of them that there is only one possibility that exists that eta r 1 is equal to eta r 2, which means that all reversible engines will have the same efficiency. If it did not be the case, then let us say if one of them is less efficient, what will happen is that if one of them is less efficient, we are going to put it on the right hand side and try to drive a reversible engine, which you know will actually violet. So, uh, so, now we see that the all reversible engines working between two uh, temperature reservoirs have the same efficiency. So, that is very important efficiency when, when you are talking about we are only talking about the engines which have same fixed to temperature from which it is uh, taking in the heat and throwing away the heat. However, in case of diesel and uh, gasoline engine we have seen that that is not the case for diesel engine we had all four different temperatures and in the gasoline engine also we had different temperatures. However, for Starling engine we saw that uh, if using uh, the regenerator it was maintaining only two different temperatures like the upper plate and the uh, plate below and therefore, it could have as close to uh, real Carnot engine as possible. Mm -hmm.